Okay, today I'm going to show you how to get EPU Engine 4 installed on Windows 10. This is for ASUS motherboards only that are compatible with only EPU Engine 4. There is EPU Engine 6 which is compatible with Windows 10 but if your motherboard does not support it you won't be able to install it. Like my uh, like my motherboard, I can't use EPU Engine 6. I can only use EPU Engine 4. Well, what EPU Engine is, it's a software that ASUS uses to control the clock speed of your to efficiently control the clock speed speed of your um, processors, so you get better temperatures. You can see right here at the bottom where my processor is running at 34 degrees celsius and this is without EPU engine installed first thing is you want to know what motherboard version you have or what model you'll want to download CPU-Z to see what your motherboard model is I'll leave a download link in the description. After you've downloaded and installed CPU-Z, all you have to do is run it. Click on motherboard and look for the motherboard model which is right here. next step is you want to go to the ASUS website go under the support section and in here you want to type your motherboard model exactly because it will actually redirect you to the actual page it, for every slash and dash there is in the name for me, I have the lab preloaded where the tab preloaded for my motherboard. The website might be slow at searching for your motherboard, or I just don't know if it's me. Next is you want to pick your operating system. Just to know what your operating system is, just for Windows 10, just right-click on the Start menu, click on System, and you'll look under System Type and you can see I have a 64-bit version so I want to be what you want to do is actually go down this list on your motherboard drivers and tools section is click on every 64-bit operating system going down so like for me I'll click on Windows 10 and what we're looking for is like the EP, the EPU engine download section. There's not one for Windows 10. There's an. It's not for Windows 8. 8.1. And under Windows 7. And just make sure you look under utilities, that's where it would be. Scroll down until you see EPU Engine 4. For me, I. It, for me, right now, it's version 1.3. You found it on the list, just click the global download. And I'll start downloading. It's actually pretty quick for me because I got good internet speed. Then you'll want to open it up, extract the folder by right clicking and hit. You want to extract it.
Okay. This step is the tricky step, which most people... Like, if you actually start this program right now, you'll get... When you try to install it, you're gonna get a... Yeah, you're gonna get this, that EPU engine bar is not supported by this model, which it actually is. It's something to do with Windows 10. So what you have to actually do is go to properties, go under compatibility, run uh, make sure you have run this program in compatibility mode. Select you get the only one that actually works is running it under Windows 98 slash ME. All other compatibility versions does not work other than 98. Just hit apply, hit OK, then run the setup, and it should install just fine. You're going to be prompted to restart your computer. Yeah, just ignore that. That's just my antivirus. I'll hit no. Right now I'll restart my computer. Okay, after you restart your computer, you'll get either one of two things here. This will pop up automatic where this will pop up automatically. Or you'll also get a notification saying you need to calibrate it. Uh, calibrate the EPU function. Just hit exit for now for that and what it actually says you have to close all running programs before you do it. What you really actually have to do is just go to task manager, go to details. Just ignore the system idle process. That's just uh, processor power and reserve. Just go down your list. If there's any high numbers for me, I'm recording, so I'm only getting like 15% or so. Mm, about 15, 20% is seems like it'll run just fine. So after that, you just want to hit calibrate. Okay, after that's done, you're basically done after that. The there is a few things you should know is there's some settings right here that you could tweak with, but I just recommend using default, like just don't mess with it. Right here is um this shows us how much power is actually being drawn to the processor in watts and also shows like a little status thing on how much energy you have saved or whatever um, the one thing you should know about EPU engine is if you over volt your processor or change the voltage in the BIOS for, this is just I don't know if this is affected on all motherboards or what that if I over if I actually change the core voltage settings in the BIOS, it'll disable EPU engine. Like it'll actually say something about it can't change the voltage or something and it'll disable it. So the only way to re enable it is actually setting your voltage core voltage to auto in your BIOS. But this only does go up to the limit of what the processor voltage is. It doesn't actually overvolt it. But it makes it. It's mostly to what this program does. It's actually to efficiently run your processor, like using less power, generates less heat. 
like if you see right here just with me recording and stuff I'm only running at like before I was like capping out around 30 degrees like 35 30 like right now just in the high performance mode I'm already dropped about 10 degrees C um, there's these two uh, another mode is the maximum power saving which for me depending on what your processor is which you have the your processor overclocked to these lower clocks will differ for me if I have it I have mine at 4 gigahertz so the lowest these are clock these are clocks like what Windows can control itself in its power options that if you actually like in the power options in Windows that makes it so you could change the how much power is being drawn to the processor which for me it, the lowest I could go is 1.4 gigahertz which the core voltage is actually this right here is not the actual core voltage this is actually something out like this raises what the core voltage should be but to get the correct core voltage what I'm actually getting is actually a lot lower than that as you see right here the pr in the power saving mode, I'm only pulling one point, <laughs> just point, just under point nine volts, basically. Using only fourteen watts. The lowest I've seen this get to is probably about six watts at idle. You can see my temperature is right here, my minimum, just from booting up the computer and setting things up for the recording. It went all the way down to 12 degrees C. See, I've seen this go all the way down to 11, which is pretty cold. It's like below 6. This right here is just barely 60 degrees Fahrenheit around there and our, we keep the house temperature at 70 so I'm actually the processor is actually getting cooler than the room temperature and this is running on the stock heatsink that came with the processor and I have it overclocked right now it's technically underclocked but I have this overclocked to 4 gigahertz which It'll see how it fluctuates like it goes up and it goes down it's just so it doesn't use like it only uses the higher frequencies if it needs it if you just don't it, there's also the auto mode which it uses both profiles right here what it actually does is it'll if the processor is in high load it'll keep the it'll convert into high performance mode if it's if the processor is not gaining a whole lot of load it'll drop it into maximum power saving mode and if it needed that, it like that but for me what I, since i since this is a 6 core processor running at 1.4 gigahertz is actually good enough like I could watch full video like I could browse the web watch videos online and do a whole lot of multitasking just in this in 
just running off of 1.4 gigahertz. Processor is not running that hot. It only reaches probably about 25 degrees C or so under this mode. At high load, you can see like right now it's like at 50, almost 50% load. Because of the clock being so low. I've even ran Minecraft in this mode, which doesn't like it doesn't really take such a hit. Usually when I play games, I'll switch over to high performance mode, which I just switch back and forth on my own, like depending on what I'm doing. But if you don't want to keep switching back and forth, you could just hit auto, depending on what you're doing, it'll actually automatically adjust it. Let me switch to high just because I'm recording. And... I think that's it. Until next time.